Hey, Coach, nine practices in, got a scrimmage under your belt now. What are your impressions of, of things and how, how are things coming along? I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, when you, when you look at the makeup of the team and um, it always is going to start with the offensive line. And I feel like the three guys we got out of the portal and them, them working with the ones and, and uh, the ability that they have helps that right away. Our other two guys are doing a great job too The the uh, with the starting five. We've got to develop some depth there. You know, I think right now we feel like we maybe have eight guys that we feel good about and we've got some young guys that keep getting better and then take a step back, keep getting better. The more you put in, the, the harder it is on those guys to – um, you know, improve right away, but they're they're working hard at it. But I, I like the O line, and I like what they're doing. Uh, we've had good good work at quarterback. You know, Talon has kind of been the guy that works with the ones. He's uh, earned that himself from the minute he got here, to how he's conducted his business, how he leads, how he studies, uh, how hard he goes. You know, and all the mat drills that we did. He's the first guy winning. Uh, on the races, so he's done a nice job on that. Uh, I think there's a good competition for who's going to be number two, and I'm really not sure who that is right now. Um, Malachi, Jacoby, and KJ, the youngster, have all had their bright spots uh, and then made mistakes and had some spots that you know aren't what we want. Uh, I think it's been hard on Jacoby as far as you know the third new offense and how he's got to get there. Not not necessarily mentally. But the drops and the things that we do different are different to him. So he's got to catch his feet up. Um, he's got a great arm, and he's working hard at it. And I love his attitude. Uh, I just think he needs to catch up with our techniques and the timing because everything for us is timing. Um, and he's come from different systems than that. So, uh, but I, I think t I think he had a really good week last week, and he had a good day today. So that's that's good. When. Taylor entered the transfer portal, um, I think you said maybe a day or two after uh, you guys hit him up, and uh, you recruited him out of high school. I was just curious how that process unfolded when you recognized that he was in the portal and just, I guess, going back to the recruitment, how you identified that he was the guy that you wanted. Well, one of the things that was fun at, at Missouri State is I had a bunch of young guys on the staff and aggressive and aggressive recruiters. and. They brought Taylor to me and showed them. They're all fired up. They've had great talks with them, and I said, "We ain't getting him. We ain't getting him." <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're not getting him. Oh no, coach, he he likes us. And I said, "Yeah, we're not gonna get him, um, just because of his ability. You know, his size and str and speed and the way he can throw the ball." Uh, but I did I did remember him on that. And when I got here, Coach Pitt said, "Go get a quarterback." Um, do whatever you want to do, go get us a quarterback. And um, so I had help with, with Miles Fishback as an as a, uh, analyst for us, and then Will, um, our graduate assistant. And we scoured, you know, the portal everywhere and uh, traveled around the country. I really liked Talon. I liked his video. I liked what other coaches said about him. I talked to Barry about him because Barry played with him, played against him in the um, – championship game I think it was and uh, and then I went out and met him and the thing I was most impressed was when I was talking to him I could see him picturing the plays and the formations and everything in his mind and his ability to do that and I've always felt that's the one thing that a quarterback has to be able to do that's how you get better on the sideline when you come off uh, the field that's how you get better at halftime is that I can say something to him he can see it and understand, you know, what I'm talking about coverage-wise or route-wise. And uh, and then I just liked his motivation. He was He's a very highly motivated young man. He spends more time in that building than anybody. Um, he's got this little routine he goes through where he takes his iPad out on the field and watches video and does his footwork. And uh, so he's going to just continue to get better and better. Sticking with Taylor, it seems like, Maybe we haven't been able to see him fully unleashed just because, you know, he's not able to get out of the pocket as much as maybe he'd like to. What have you seen from him maybe being held back just because of those specific circumstances? Yeah, I mean, the way you practice is it, he's going to be held back. You know, um, I'm not comparing him to Lamar Jackson or anything, but when we when we had Lamar, 
you know, I was always like, well, I'm not sure we're going to know how good he is until they have to tackle him, you know. Um, and I'd keep saying that to the staff and keep saying it, and then I just decided uh, one scrimmage to, okay, when he runs, you have to tackle him. If he's in the pocket, nobody hits him. Um, and then there was no question that he was the starter. Um, you know, and, and right now we're not even doing a lot of quarterback running game stuff just because we want to get better on the other parts of it. We do it in drills and we practice it all the time. But when you get in scrimmages, um, they blow the whistle and they tag him on the – and he's down. And, you know, it's hard to go execute and, and score points. So we haven't done a whole lot of that. But he's pretty special. When he turns it on and that stride and speed that he has, uh, he can really run. And now that you've become a little bit more familiar with the roster, you've seen the guys in nine practices now, anybody who's really stood out to you or maybe surprised you? Well, you know, Armstrong and Broden have done a really nice job. Now, Armstrong's been a little bit nicked up the last couple of days. Um, nothing bad, but, he, you know, he should be back out there. They're tough matchups because they both have great size. They both can elevate and turn their bodies. Um they're quick in and out of their breaks. And, you know, Broden's 6'6 and can work inside routes and outside routes. Armstrong 6'4 and can work inside and outside. So they've been Im impressive to me. Um, Satania's speed is something that's really shown up and his ability to run with the ball and make plays. And he's competitive. I like his competitive spirit. So I've been, I've been really impressed with those three guys with the receiver group. Um, and how, how hard they've played and how they've come along. Uh, the running group is, is running back group is going to be real competitive, I think, you know, with R Dub and, and JJ um, probably competing for the starter. If, you know, if we were playing a game next at the end of the week, they would be the ones competing for that starter. Uh, the youngster, Braylon, has done a great job. He's big, he's really physical, he's got great hands. It's all new to him, so there's times he has a far away look in his eyes when he doesn't know the play or can't picture it in his mind. Um, but he, he's got a chance to be special. I did want to ask you specifically about the run game. What have you seen from it so far? And, and then the depth, because Isaiah and Dominic Johnson have been here forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what, when we came off the field um, last week after the three practices and after the scrimmage, I said to Coach Pitt, we're going to be able to run the ball. You know, and that was one of our um, goals going into the scrimmage on Saturday was to run the ball early, establish the run, and be physical with it. And we did a good job blocking up front. They made it hard, the movements that they have, and, and that will just pay off for us. Um, and then we broke tackles and got yards after contact and um, made a lot, of, on a, a lot of plays after contact, which was great to see. Your offense over the years uh – have you, have you changed in the amount of times you huddle or don't huddle? And can can you go hurry up? What's your what's your thoughts on that and tempo? Yeah, I think the thing that that I that we will try to do here is mix up the tempo. You know, sometimes huddle, sometimes fast huddle, sometimes go um, no huddle with quick, you know, uh, fastball plays. Sometimes go no huddle and slow the tempo down a little bit and just you know change it up not just do one single thing. That's that's something that I've I've felt like I, I like better than just going fast, 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 fast. Well what have your impressions been of the tight end room? I know you haven't gotten to see oh, Ty yeah. too much, I but wish uh brought that up because Luke <laughs> Luke's special. You know, he's really a special player and his ability to run routes, catch the ball. Um he's really competitive, you know, and He's down a little weight right now from where he played that last year, so he, he's got to get back up his weight. But you wouldn't notice it by his blocking because he's so tough, you know. But he will he gets a little more lead in his rear end than he'll be able to even do a better job of, of blocking. But he's a special receiver. He's going to get open and make big plays for us and be the quarterback's best friend on third down and, and red zone. Uh, I like what I've seen from Gum. You know, I think he's a guy that, that just – he's a playmaker. You know, he's he's got to get where he does everything right and understands what he's doing. And um, But he's really, really competitive. He wants the ball and he works hard to get it. And then he, he makes yards after contact the other day in the scrimmage, which was great to see. 
Um, Big Andreas is uh, doing a good job of blocking. It's a little bit new to him. You know, the, the whole game is of football is a little bit new, so he's got to spend some time in really getting to know it and understand it. You mentioned the offensive line. Um, obviously, Kudas st last year was outside, and he's kicked into guard. I mean, what have you seen from him development-wise and also Josh Braun, too, the other guard, the other routine returnee? Yeah, I think Brahm's the one that, you know, helps us out on the line as far as his knowledge and understanding and what to do. And uh, he's playing faster and quicker, which is something that we have to have him do. Uh, Kudus is really taking huge steps forward. And, you know, him and Colm Jr. over there on the left side working together, they're a pretty good combination. And Kudus has got some really good athletic ability for that spot and enough um, – size and strength to hunker down when he has to. So, uh, you know, and then I, th I think Addison's done a really nice job inside too, and, and being able to play next to Braun and Kudis has helped him. Well, I was going to ask you about Addison, but you answered it there. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, has there been anybody that's kind of stood out as like a particular guy that's given you fits through nine practices? I, I know there is, you know. Uh, so like that, that's one of the huge differences um, from being the head coach and being the offensive coordinator is I probably got the first 11 guys down and who they are and I know them off the field and that, but I'm not sure I pay any attention to them that much on the field, except for maybe matchups, you know, making sure the quarterbacks know who's on who and, and that, but usually there you just use numbers. Um, so that that would be like I don't pay a lot of attention to the defense and what they're doing or what's going on. We're just trying to get a first down. And following up on that, do you do you like that? Do you like being able to just focus solely on? It's the fun. Side yeah, it's 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 been fun. It's been enjoyable, and you know the the meeting time in the classroom with the quarterbacks is special and the fastest time of the day. The clock ticks when you're in there, and you know the year I took off from from coaching and was down in Florida and. I'm telling you, the clock doesn't move. You look at the clock, you look at it again. Oh, my gosh, what am I going to do today? I even went and practiced at the range hitting golf balls. I hated it, you know. Uh, I got better. It's amazing how practice makes you better. But it was, like, so boring. And, you know, the, so now when I'm in that meeting room with the quarterbacks, I'm like, oh, my gosh, how much? We only got two minutes left. We only got five minutes left. It, it just goes so fast. And, and they're a great group of young men, and they're fun. We, you know, we have some fun in there. It's not uh, – it's easier. Bobby, speaking of that, where, 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 where did you live down in Florida? I lived in um, Lake Nona. Okay, I have to look you know that where up. that is? It's in Orlando. Yeah. It's oh, okay. it, uh, so when my daughter was trying to be a professional golfer and she was on the Florida tour down there, um, we got a place in Lake Nona, which is uh, it's a great practice facility. It's very well known. A lot of the European golfers live in there, and then they're never there. So it's kind of like a ghost. It's a pretty good place to be able to hide out and. Uh, I think the only only one I really knew was the old head coach from here in Notre Dame. He lived down the street from me. Um, yeah, Lou Holtz. Oh, yeah. yeah, he lived yeah, right he down the street. Well, I, I was going to ask you, how, how do you feel like the installation's gone? How much have you gotten in? Just how do you think all that's gone? Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's going well. Um, we've cut back a little bit. You know, it's it's not exactly what we want to be able to get done in in the number of days and seven days that we had. Um, but I think we had to just because it's new to everybody. You know, there's no carryover for anybody, so we cut back a little bit. And I think that's the, you know, the huge advantage of Coach Pittman um, hiring Ronnie Fouch and, and Colby Smith is they already know the offense. They know how to teach it. Um, Colby played in it. He knows how to run it and, and make tons of yards and score touchdowns in it. Um, so that allowed us to go a little bit faster. And, uh, you know, you see the other coaches that it's brand new to, you know, going into Colby's office or going into Ronnie's office and asking them questions. And that's the advantage of, of having the knowledge of, of the offense is they can teach it not only to the, to the players but to the other coaches as well. I see with you, with you being new back here, how much has that helped to have a couple of assistants that you know worked with you and you're familiar with and everything if you could elaborate on that a little it's just huge you know it's huge to be able to have that happen and 
and I took the job knowing that I'm, that might not be able to to happen. You know that it might be a, everybody was coming back on the staff, and and coach did say, you know, how this goes, some people will leave, and then we'll consider it. Um, but he made the hires after he met and talked with them and interviewed them and liked them. So I remember back in '08, a lot of younger players you were you were starting out with. Um, and it took a little bit to get the offense going. You eventually obviously did. Do you think with a, an older group like you have now that you guys will be able – I may be getting ahead of myself, but, I mean, there's a couple of tough road games early in the season. You guys think you'll be able to hit the ground running and, and yeah, hold it on offense? No choice. And it's different now, you know, and it's easier for the players. Uh, you've got older kids that already been through offenses. And, and predominantly back then, everything everybody was freshmen. Oh, boy, they were good freshmen. Saw a couple of them um, this past weekend with uh, Joe Adams and uh, Jay Wright and and Chris Gregg. Um, oh, they were freshmen that year, uh, and they haven't been through it. You know, they hadn't been through installs. They haven't been through the grind. They haven't been through the preparation. But when you get guys with experience, even if it's from the portal, you start to learn how to learn the offense start to you know it doesn't take as long anymore same thing happened in the nfl when you you know you get traded you already been through you, you pick it up quicker uh when they change offensive coordinators the guys that are there before they pick it up quicker because they've already been through it so i'm hoping that helps us a lot but these guys have been good at it they've been good at learning and and you know we're gonna we're gonna have all this package and then whatever it is we can execute that's what we'll that's what we'll do um, you guys have uh, had some, I guess, bigger personnel in there today and stuff. What what else uh, you plan on implementing, I guess, before the spring as far as personnel groupings? Oh uh, yeah, I, I I was hesitant on on doing the you know the thirteen and twenty two personnel and all that, but Coach Pitts in the in a lot of situations that we do. So I was feeling like we ended up being at a disadvantage a little bit because we, I didn't get into those last Saturday. Uh, so we just feel like let's put them in and, and uh, you know, make sure we're not at a disadvantage in some of the situations that we're practicing. So, and they've always been good to us. So we, we've got to get where we can execute them and do well. we we got a ways to go. Today wasn't like an indication of, oh, man, let's be 22 team. We're not going to do that. I can guarantee you that. But we are going to be good at it in the situation football. Looking at Talon's numbers when he was at Boise State, you know, the, the completion percentage was, you know, around the 50s, but he was able to have a lot of explosive plays. What's that balancing act like for you where maybe you want that completions percentage a little higher, but you also want to make sure those those explosive plays, those long runs and passes are still there? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we're working extremely hard on, and, and the majority of it is technique and fundamentals, and his he's got to get set. He's got to stay balanced, and he's got to get over the top on his release. You know, even the other day when he missed a couple, I called them layups. Um, it, it was all technique. He dropped his hip, dropped his elbow, ball flew, um, something that can't happen. He's got to get the muscle memory um, where when it's in the heat of the battle that he's perfect on his technique. And I tell you what, I took my hat off to him. He was working extremely hard at it today. Um, and... Uh, it was really good to see, and he's he's got to you know study and watch a little bit more of Ryan and and the way that you know Talon's different than everybody else. You know the TikTok video guys that throw it sidearm and do all that. This dude's six six. All he's got to do is get up over the top, and he can complete anything. So he's got to understand that because you go to some of these quarterback gurus and some of the drills they do. You know, everybody thinks they're coaching Mahomes. And he's not Mahomes. He needs to set and get over the top and throw the ball. And when he does that, he's he's going to get that percentage up. And we're going to, you know, check the ball down and be able to, you know, get a higher completion percentage and still get the big plays. Uh, there's been some chatter among us and the people that were here the last time you were here that maybe you've mellowed out a little bit in the, in the practice setting. Do you think you've mellowed out at all, or is it the same? You guys know I've always been mellow. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Nice, easy going, happy guy. Looks like you guys have specifically gotten the ball to Satania. You mentioned him a little earlier, but his skill set, what, what do you like about him? And is he a Joe Adams type 
Got he's got it. that opportunity. Yeah, he's got that opportunity to be, you know, Joe and Jay Wright and that kind of speed and quickness, change of direction. I've been impressed with his hands. You know, sometimes when guys go that fast, they can't throw their hands up at the right time, and he's he's really natural at it. Uh, I was really happy with the yards he got after contact in the scrimmage the other day, and he right now he's he would be that guy that can run and and uh, you know let him touch the ball out of the backfield some and and just get it in his hands because he's fast enough to make big plays for us. Uh, you brought up watching tape of Mallet. Um, he's going into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame next month, I think. And you obviously saw how his legacy played out here. What when you think of him, like his legacy to the state, what what does it mean to you? Yeah, it's so sad that he's not with us. It's hard, but I mean, he is a he was an unbelievable player and an unbelievable personality. You know, because he he'd walk into a room and light up the room and be happy, talk to everybody, and everybody had, um, you know good to meet Ryan Mallett and he's such a good guy and, and a good person and um, you know and he should be in that Hall of Fame there's no question about that he he changed our program here I thought you know and on those 2008 is that when you said it was yeah. on those when we struggled a little bit oh no Ryan was here 2008 so that's when I started to do Sunday night practices so we did Sunday night practices for Ryan um, to start working the offense, but also for our coaching staff to see Ryan executing the offense and give us energy to attack the week every week um, coming in on Monday morning. So, uh, you know, you can't say enough great things about Ryan and what, what he's done for Arkansas football.